Next Friday, the 18th of February, the Guildford transmitter will be off the air between 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock for planned essential maintenance. Teachers are advised to use alternative transmissions for programmes scheduled that day. of three, that's nine. One, four, nine. A sequence of square numbers. Four fours, two fours are eight, three fours, twelve, Sixteen, and the next square number is, it's five fives, but there's another way of seeing how the sequence grows. Look at the differences. The difference between one and four is three. The difference between four and nine is five. And the difference between 9 and 16 is 7. Let's just look at the differences. They go up in a sequence too. 3, 5, 7. It's a sequence you've probably seen before. The sequence of odd numbers. But the sequence of odd numbers starts with a number 1. So let's have a look from the beginning. Now we'll add them together and watch out for the square numbers.
The square numbers get larger and larger very quickly. Perhaps after the programme, you can have a try at making some of them for yourself. And if you want to check that you've got them right, have a look at the multiplication square. Can you see the square numbers? Here's the first one. Then four. Then nine. They're in a straight line. They're all square numbers, and they all occur where a number is multiplied by itself. Look at the top corner again. One times one is one. That's the first square number. Two times two is four. Three times three is nine. So now you know where square numbers come from, you should be able to work out some more square numbers on your own. Number sequences can turn up in the most unexpected places. This is a poinsettia plant. It's one year old. And this year, the main stem will grow a little taller. But we'll see no new branches until next year, when a side branch will grow from here. Then every year, the main stem will grow a new branch. It sounds a bit difficult, but perhaps this will help. During the first year, the main stem grows without any branches. So that's one main stem and no branches. That's a total of one. The following year, the main stem grows higher. Still one main stem. But this year, it also grows a branch. So that's one branch, a total of two. One year later, The main stem grows taller and last year's branch becomes a main stem. So that's two main stems. No branch on the new stem, but the old stem grows another one. So that's one branch, a total of three. Now the plant's really beginning to grow. The new branch on the left becomes a main stem, although it won't have branches of its own until next year. That's three main stems. And the old stems on the right each grow a branch. Two branches. A total of five. Next year, how many stems will there be? All these. Five. And branches, only from the old stems, three branches, a total of eight. By the sixth year, it's getting difficult to follow. Here are the stems. The same as last year's total. Eight. And branches? One, two, three, four, five branches. Total, 13. The total number of stems and branches every year goes up in a sequence. One, two, Three, five, eight, thirteen. And perhaps you've spotted how to continue it. Any two numbers added together give you the next one. One plus two is 
three. Two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. Five plus eight is thirteen. So the next number will be eight plus thirteen, which is twenty-one. This sequence is called a Fibonacci sequence after the mathematician who first thought of it. This Nautilus shell doesn't look as though it has much to do with the Fibonacci sequence, but there is a connection. If you make squares out of the Fibonacci numbers and fit them together like this, you can make a rectangle that turns as it grows. Although the size of the rectangle changes, the shape stays almost exactly the same. And there's something else that's interesting about the rectangle. You can draw a special curve through the points where the squares meet. The curve's called a spiral, and it grows in exactly the same way as the Nautilus shell. Now, of course, the Nautilus doesn't know anything about Fibonacci numbers. It just naturally grows that shape. Here's something else that grows and grows. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. And every wife had seven sacks. And every sack had seven cats. And every cat had seven kits. Kits, cats, sacks. Wives, how many were going to St. Ives? Well, if you've ever been caught out by that story, you'll know that the answer is one. All the rest were coming from St. Ives. But let's see how many there were coming from St. Ives. A man, that's one. With seven wives, that's seven. Each with seven sacks, that's seven times seven, which is 49. In each of those 49 sacks were seven cats. That's 343. And each of those 343 cats had seven kittens. That's 2,401 kittens altogether. These numbers form a sequence. 1, 7, 49, 343, 2,401. Each number is seven times the one before. Seven ones are seven, seven sevens are 49, seven 49s are 343, seven 343s are 2,401. There are many different sorts of sequences. And if you've got a calculator, you can make up some of your own. Now, you may have to experiment. Not all calculators work in the same way. On this one, if I press 2 and multiply twice and keep pressing the equal sign, I get 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. If I press 3, the numbers go up even quicker. Three, nine, 27, 81, 243, and so on. And now it's quiz time. This is the part of the program where you do the work. Have a look at this sequence. Don't try and work out the next number yet. Just find the rule. 3, 6, 12, 24. Ready, go. Three to six could be add three or multiply by two. 
6 to 12 could be add 6 or multiply by 2. So the rule seems to be multiply by 2. 6 multiplied by 2 is 12. 12 multiplied by 2 is 24. Now you can work out the next number in the sequence. Ready, go. It's 24 multiplied by 2, 48. One more sequence. What comes next? Ready, go. The rule is add one more each time. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. Four plus three is seven. But that's not the only rule that fits. One times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight. And that's the sequence that turns up in the story of Shirham, the king. Once upon a time, there was a king called Shirham who was bored. He asked his grand vizier, Sissa, for something to keep him amused. Sissa invented the game of chess. Shirham was so delighted that he asked Sissa to name what he wanted in return. Sissa asked for one grain of rice for the first square of the chessboard, two for the second, four for the third, eight for the fourth, and so on, doubling each time until each of the 64 squares had the correct number of grains. Now the king was surprised that Sissa had asked for so little, but sent his chief granary master to get the rice. Let's see what the granary master had to do. On the first square, one grain. On the second square, two. On the third, Four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one hundred and twenty-eight. Hmm. This chessboard's going to be too small to carry on, but we've got a bigger one. And here it is, 64 squares, just like a proper chessboard. And we shouldn't have any problem getting all our rice on this one. Now, where did we get to? The ninth square. 256 grains of rice. Five hundred and twelve. A thousand and twenty-four. Two thousand and forty-eight. Four thousand and ninety-six. Eight thousand one hundred and ninety-two. Over sixteen thousand. Over 32,000. We're only at the beginning of the third row, but already the piles of rice are looking well, surprisingly large. Let's see what happens if we carry on. Over 65,000. Over 100,000. Over a quarter of a million. 
over a half a million. Over one million grains. Two million. Four million. Over eight million grains of rice. And we've only got to the 24th square. We're not even halfway yet. We're going to need more rice. Come on, faster. Nearly 17 million grains of rice. So you can see that Sissa's request wasn't quite so silly. We're only on the 25th square, but to get up to the 50th square would take all the rice that was produced in the world last year. And the right number of grains to fill the 64th square would cover the whole world. But on math score, this is as far as we can go. Thirty three million five hundred and fifty four thousand four hundred and thirty two grains of rice. 